What we're gonna talk about today is the 10.3B notes. And this is where we introduce the third property. And really a lot of what we do today is just gonna be example after example of this property because I want you to kind of get used to this. It's, it's, it's weird, but it's easy in a sense. So looking at chords and arcs once again, it turns out if a diameter or a radius is perpendicular, If a diameter or radius is perpendicular to the chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. And another way of putting it is if we see just if we see these right angles, if we see these boxes that means everything just cut, gets cut in half. Not only are the chords and arcs congruent, but they also get cut in half. So say for instance, AF is four, that would mean that FB is four. And the whole thing would be eight. So if we see a right angle, everything just gets cut in half down the middle. The key that we're looking for here, just, just an idea to kind of fall off of. If we actually see that like from E to H, if this distance from E to H is perpendicular to AB, that actually means that the distance from A to F is equal to F to B. And that also works for the arcs as well. It might also be important to include that arc AH, and that is an arc, so I'm going to put the arc sign, is equal to arc HB. For a lot of the examples that we do today, the information will be separate to the diagram. So we need to take that information and put it on the diagram. Let me show you number one, for instance. In number one, in circle Z, because Z is the center, if the length of segment RS is 18 and the measure of arc TY is 42, find each measure. Given this diagram, we want to put the information up here on here and use it to find everything else. <coughs> so RS, first of all, RS is this whole length here. It's the whole segment. That's 18. We are told that the measure of arc TY is 42. Now an arc is just an outside portion of the circle. So check this out. TY is right here. That's 42 degrees. Now before we even go looking for these measures over here to the right, I'm going to fill in the gaps here. Because of our properties that we've talked about, there's two things I want you to notice. Number one, the tick marks. I want you to remember that the tick marks tell us that the chords are congruent and the arcs are congruent. In other words, a whole lot of stuff in here, a whole lot of things are congruent. They're equal. The second thing is the fact that we have the perpendicular lines. We have the perpendicular segments, the right angles. That means everything gets cut in half. What does that do for us? It means that if TY is 42, YU is also 42. And because the arcs are congruent, RX is 42, and XS is also 42. Now RS, RS we said was the whole segment here. That total segment is 18. But because of the right angle, it gets cut in half. So 18 divided by 2. That's 9. I'll do this in another color to make it stand out. RW is 9. WS is 9. Those two parts are congruent because they're cut in half. And then because the chords are congruent, TV is 9 and VU is 9 as well. 
So now we have every piece of information we need to actually answer these questions over here. Check this out. First, they want us to find the length of segment TV. So from T to V, we already have that. It's 9. TV is 9. Now, segment TU goes from T to U. That has 9 and 9, so we add those together. TU is equal to 9 plus 9. That's 18. So we just add together the two segments, the two parts on that line. We also want to find segment WS. W is here, S is here. Oh, look, it's 9. We already have that. We're also going to find the measure of arcs. The measure of arc YU. Now, arc YU. Y is here, U is here. I want that arc. It's 42 degrees. Remember, arc YU is just that portion of the circle right there. Then we want to find the measure of arc RS. Arc RS starts at R, goes around to S. This is just like what we did in 10.2 last week. This is adding together parts of an arc. There's a 42 here and a 42 here. All right, the measure of arc RS is equal to 42 plus 42. That's 84. Done. That's it. So it just comes down to using our properties to break everything up. If we look at our next page, we have another example. This example is going to be different from what we just did. Check it out. In number two, in circle I, BG is 17, and the measure of arc CHA is 256. Find each measure. Basically, it's the same thing that we just did, but a little bit backwards. BG, first of all, I'm going to put BG where it goes. And BG is just this segment here. All right, that's 17. All right. The measure of arc CHA. Using everything that we've talked about arc so far, CHA has three letters. That is a long trip. It's the long way. So I have to go from C to A, but I have to go through H to do it. This arc right here is 256 degrees. That means that we have to find the measures of the other two arcs. That's no biggie. All we have to do is remember how many degrees are in a circle. How many degrees are there in a circle? 360 degrees. So like we've done before, we just take the total, which is 360, and subtract what we know. We take away what we know, which is the 256. Well, that will leave me with 104 degrees. But here's the thing. There's, a there's 104 degrees between BC and AB. So what do we do? The answer to that is divide by 2. And if you thought about that beforehand, congratulations, you got it. We're dividing by 2 because the measure of the arcs is congruent. Remember, if the chords are equidistant, these tick marks tell us that they're equidistant. If the chords are equidistant or the same distance from the center, then the chords are congruent. And if the chords are congruent, the arcs are congruent. In other words, whatever AB is, BC will be the same. So we just do 104 divided by 2. That's going to give me 52 degrees. So BC is 52 degrees. And AB is 52 degrees. From there, before I even, again, before I even go find these, Let's use what we know to break these problems down. First of all, let's work with BG. I love that they gave us BG. It's 17. 
All right, BG is 17. What's GC? 17, exactly. GC is 17. Who wants to take a guess at what DB is? 17. And AF? 17. It's a, th these problems are a whole lot of segments that are the same length and arcs that are the same length. Now, BC? BC is the full length from B to C, which is 17 plus 17. I'll put that work down here. BC is equal to 17 plus 17. That's 34. So BC, which is a segment, is 34 units, whatever units those might be. Now, we also want to find FB. And FB is just this section, from the segment from F to B. It's this short one right here at the tip of my finger. Well, that's just 17. Next, we want to find the measure of arc AB. That just goes from A to B the short way. That's not hard to see. That's 52 degrees. That's the length of that whole arc in purple that I just shaded. We also want to know the measure of arc BC. That goes from B around to C. We already know that one. That's 52 degrees. Last but not least, we need to find the measure of arc EC. EC is only part of the arc of BC. It's right here. Well, if BC is 52, what do I need to do with 52 to get EC? Divide it by 2. A exactly. Arc EC is equal to the 52 degrees divided by 2. That's 26. Some problems, like number three, won't require as much work. Yes, I am going to go on to number three, because it's another example a lot like this, except we don't have to do as much math. We don't have to do the 360 minus. In circle R, Vx, the segment, is 48. Vx is this line right here. It's that line segment. That's 48. And the measure of arc Vw is 53. Arc Vw is that arc right there. Find each measure. Well, it's the same thing. If VW is 53 degrees, what's WX? Aldo? Uh, 53. 53, exactly. And, and Cole, if VW and WX are both 53, what do you think ST is? 53 degrees. Yeah, we got it. It's basically a mirror. These arcs are going to be the same. Now, the total length of Wx is 48. So if I want to find just Vq, what do I do with 48? Tiffany, what do you think? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Exactly. 48 divided by 2 is 24. That means that Vq is 24. And guess what? You've probably got it already. Every other line segment will be 24. QX is 24. SP is 24. PU is 24. Don't even know if I did that on purpose, but I do think it's a little bit funny. Filling in the puzzle, filling in every missing piece is probably the best way to go about this because once you have every piece filled in, we can go over here and start finding everything. The length of SU. SU is the whole thing. It's basically VX. It's 48. Without even having to add those up. I want you to be able to get that without even needing to add them up. I want you to realize that VX, whoop. I want you to realize that VX was the whole chord, and that was 48. 
SU is also the whole chord. So that will be 48 as well. But of course, we need to find segment SP. SP is that right there. Oh, it's 24. We also wanted to find the measure of arc ST. Arc ST is right here. All right, that's 53 degrees. But of course, I'm going to challenge you just a little bit and say find the measure of arc SU. Arc SU starts at S, goes to U, and it is the short way. So the measure of arc SU is going to be equal to, well, there's a 53 degrees here on the top, 53 degrees there on the bottom. 53 plus 53. That gives me 106. 106 degrees. And then, because I'm shifty enough, the measure of arc VX. Realize that VX is the whole arc. VX is this whole arc right here, which means it's going to be congruent to SU, and we just found SU. SU was 106. 106. Arc VX is congruent to arc SU. So they're the same measure. A lot of this is just breaking it down to those parts. Now, if that's simple enough for you, let's try something a little bit more complex. We're going to have to put a little bit more thought into this next one. But you'll see that it's just a, it's the only thing that makes it complex is the strategy that we have to take. The steps, the individual steps themselves, are still pretty straightforward. Check it out. In number four, if QM is 6x minus 11 and MR is equal to 2x plus 9, find MN. Now, first of all, put the information where it goes. Do not just assume that they are equal. You want to make sure that this goes where they need to go. Q to M is this length here. That is the 6x minus 11. Then we also have MR. That goes from M down to R. That is 2x plus 9. All right. Now. When I look at these, I can actually make a judgment of whether or not they're equal. And I can tell you right now, they are. Because QM is half of QML, and MR is half of MN. So in the end, these are actually equal. And I can set them equal to each other. I, I kind of want to make a note of that. Be careful with this, though. You know, what is it? MQ is actually equal to MR. Just be careful with that in the future, because you never know when you're going to see a problem that's different. So we can actually say that 6x minus 11 is equal to 2x plus 9. And we can go from there to solve just like we did this morning on the do now. Two, uh, minus 2x on both sides. That'll give me 4x minus 11 equals 9. Move this up a little bit more. Add 11 to both sides. You will get 4x equals 20. And then divide by 4 to find that x equals 5. Minus 2x from both sides because it's the smaller. 6x minus 2x is 4x. Just bring everything else down. Solve it like a two-step equation. Now, x equals 5, but that's not what we're trying to find. We're trying to find mn. All right, well, first of all, we found that x equals 5, which means I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So I'm going to take that 5 and plug it into mr. See, if we want to find mn, we need to plug 5 into something that's on that line. So mr is equal to. 2x plus 9, except we just found out that x is 5.
Now, you can do this in your calculator. 2 times 5, that's 10. 10 plus 9 is 19. So MR itself is just this 19. But if we want to find MN, we have to take that and times it by 2. MN is equal to that 19 we just found times 2. That's 38. That's the length of that segment, whether it be centimeters, inches, feet. I would hesitate to say kilometers, because that would be huge. That is a huge circle. So in this particular problem, we had to double check and make sure that they were equal. Once we did, set them equal to each other, solve for x, plug it in, but then we have to double it. Just make sure that you, make, that you check that. Make sure that you check that and are certain that they're equal and that you also know what you're looking for. The fifth and final example for our notes today. This one's going to be a little bit different, so let's see what we have. If the measure of arc CI is 7x minus 15 degrees and EF is equal to 12x minus 8 degrees, find the measure of arc CI. Now this one we have to be careful on. I can already tell you. Watch this. Let's put the information where it needs to go. Arc CI is just this piece right here. That's the 7x minus 15. But the measure of arc EF, that goes from E to F. That's 12x minus 8. Even just highlighting these, I can tell you these are not equal. So I have to get them to be equal to each other. There's two different ways to go about this. I want to try and work with similar numbers. So here's what I'm going to do. To make these equal, I need to take the larger piece and divide by 2. This smaller piece that we have right here is equal to the larger divided by 2. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I want to write that out. I want to write that out. Um, this particular smaller arc is equal to the big arc divided by 2. That's the formula that I'm going to use to help me out here. It is possible that maybe in the future you want to work with the bigger arc and time, div, times it by 2. Or wait a minute. Maybe you want to work with the smaller arc and just do times 2 to equal out to the big arc. Maybe. But if we use this formula as our guide for this problem, this will work. 7x minus 15 is my smaller arc in this case. And this is going to be equal to 12x minus 8 divided by 2. The neat thing about this is that 12 and 8 are both divisible by 2. So check this out. 7x minus 15 equals, here's a question for you. Uh, what's 12 divided by 2? Anyone? What's 12 divided by 2? Isaac? What's 12 divided by 2? Exactly. 6x. And then be careful with this one. This is a negative 8 divided by 2. What's negative 8 divided by 2? Negative 4. So we get an equation that is exactly like what we need. And this one is uh, even nicer. I like this one. Check it out. Obviously, 6 is smaller than 7, so I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. That will leave me with just 1x minus 15 equals negative 4. And then we can add 15 to both sides and find that x equals 11. Now, of course, we're not done yet because they want us to find the measure of arc ci. Find the measure of arc ci. Well, that's awesome because the measure of arc ci is equal to that 7x minus 15. That's what we had from the very beginning. The measure of arc ci is equal to 7x minus 15. Well, we just found out that x is 11, so plug that in. 7 times 11 is 77 minus 15. 
the measure of arc CI is 62 degrees. Since it's an arc, we measure it in degrees. That's what today's lesson is all about. Does anybody have any questions for me?